welcome to another episode of Chatty Broads with Becca and Jess. Broads, broads, broads. Broads, broads, broads. What if we do a whole episode with us talking in like our old man voices? There was a time, broads. <laughs> You know what's funny is people. Uh, <laughs> you know what's funny is in Bachelor News recently. In Bachelor News, people who are tu- like tuning in for the very first time, they're like, "What in what God's the fuck name is this?" I came here because I saw Reality Steve drama, and there was these two bitches who were just like, "Move around, hello, hello there, broads." Uh, theater kids. Uh, you know, I mean, what what can we say? Good old give obnoxious me, theater kid. What are you gonna do? Don't give me a. Don't tempt me with an accent you challenge. Can, you, <laughs> you can you can take us out of the theater, but you can't take the theater out of me. What do you want? <laughs> you want this entire episode to be very dramatic? I'll talk like this the entire time. I remember like when I used to be on campus at UC Irvine, and there would be like the theater kids who would be like shouting in British accents, and it would make my whole body like. <sighs> I'll. Convulse. I'll be real with you. Um, <sighs> no, in in college, no, 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 no. I'm the, I'm okay, on the same okay, page. Okay, okay. In college, um, I, I was, was really scared. I did theater for a couple of years, and there was a boy that I had the hots, hots, hots for uh, in the theater program. And one day, I went out to get drinks with him and some of his other theater friends. They were like the cooler kids, and they talked the entire time at the bar in British accents and immediately I cut him off. I was like, I can't, I could They're never. like, no one's going to know that we're not really British. Oh my God. <laughs> Let's play a little game where we act British the entire evening. Dog. And it was, and listen, I'm listen, I, I'm a theater kid. No shade to the theater kids, but like, my God, it was like, I was so embarrassed. I was like, please, please stop. And it wasn't even embarrassment where I cared that other people were watching. It made me uncomfortable. It was cringe. That's was, what's called cringe. I bet Pilot Pete sometimes starts speaking in an accent and takes it the whole night. I don't see that. Really? Think about some of his moments on the show. Wasn't there a moment where he started speaking in an accent? Like him and Hannah oh, did. Oh, in Australia. Remember, he came in and he was like, hi, Sheila's. And I was like doing like this Aussie accent. And I was like, how long is he going to keep it up for? <laughs> Stop it. It hurts so bad. How long? How long can he keep it up for? Uh, Pilot Pete, I feel like I saw news about him the other day and now I can't recall. I think it was just maybe photos of videos of him and his family all over for Mother's Day. And people were really enjoying those. Cool. Yeah. Him and Barb. Speaking of Mother's Day. Yeah. I want to talk about something that we talked about over text. Okay. Which was our thoughts on the Kardashian flower okay. gift situation. Yeah. Let's talk about the Kardashian flower gift situation. Um, by the way, broads, we're going to have this pop culture moment. But if you want to hear more pop culture, the bros are going to be discussing current pop yes, culture news uh, on Friday, tomorrow. Yes. Their episode. Yes. Um, Who knows how that will go? That might be an absolute train wreck, but God bless and God speed. I'm sure it'll be good. I'm sure it'll be great. Fun. I'm sure it'll be fun <laughs> at the very least. Okay. So <sighs> you and I were texting back and forth because um, Travis, who's dating Courtney, Travis Barker, Barker rock star, Blink 182, drummer, drummer for the stars. Possibly the best drummer of all time. And possibly the best pop punk drummer. He is now on all the TikTok kids. Now all the TikTok kids who are famous, you know, singers or whatever have Travis on their tracks. It's no just way. kind of the thing to do. That's yeah. Funny. Yeah. He's like making his rounds with the TikTokers. Huh. Um, and I mean, you know how Courtney feels about Addison, Addison Ray. So they both love them TikTok I kids. I just can't. Okay. Anyway. I'm just not sure what type of conversation I would have with like a 17 year old. I would be like, do you need any advice? Like, I don't think I'm super smart, but you know, I'm I'm in my 30s. <laughs> 17 is like a little better like my neighbor's kid is 14 and like I never know how to talk to her because I'm like you're not like a little kid yeah well I know how to talk to kids like under the age of 12 and then anywhere between like 12 and 17 I'm yeah. kind of like I used to love I don't I'm like you're not old enough for me to like talk about right I mean maybe I don't want to say you're not old enough but like I don't feel comfortable talking to you about like Certain inappropriate to- certain topics. Well, I I used to love when I was still at my church. I loved like working at the in the high school group, and I would uh-huh. love being like a leader with like a 
the high school girls. I had so much fun. They were all so cute. But I'm just more confused by like Courtney hanging out with Addison and like having slumber parties every night. That's where I'm like, I don't even know. I mean, I feel like my topics of conversation might not be like age appropriate. I don't know what is age appropriate. I, I would guess. literally never do that. I would yeah. never have a slumber party with a 17 year old. That wasn't my daughter. Yeah, no. I or just, my niece. Yeah, I, just, like, I just don't get weird. it. I'd That's be like, weird. What, what, do, what do you want to talk about? Fine lines, which you don't have. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to borrow some of my routine. you want to borrow some of my collagen uh you know lotion but that you i don't can need? see courtney being like so what are the kids into these days you have a great courtney impression oh my god do it again <laughs> i can't you can't put me on the spot okay, okay. I, I'm, I, I, I'm gonna be on pins and needles waiting for the next <laughs> one <laughs> can't do it can't you can't put the pressure on me um uh but, but so so travis barker uh rock star is now dating courtney kardashian um r.i.p scott disick who's probably just an absolute disaster about it well especially because they're po if uh, i follow like gossip celebrity instagram accounts so they're i always see the updates about the two of them they're always posting like very sexual things to on their instagram which i'm sure scott like can can you just imagine he's just a mess your ex of years and years and check just, on oh. check on scott <laughs> um but he uh, or so so travis courtney posted this insta story with these gigantic flower arrangements, like three, probably the equivalent. There were hundreds of flowers, like hundreds and hundreds of flowers, which like Kanye used to do all that. It wasn't obviously just Kanye, but Kanye specifically used to go crazy with Kim where it would be like a wall, like the, the Dude, great wall of China of white roses. It and would be like she would walk <laughs> in and there would be it would be an entire like lagoon would be in her living room. There was one time all those <laughs> reeds, like those cattails were all over the house. Which and I all I was like, say, oh, allergies. <laughs> the thing that I do love about it with Kanye is, you know, that he was in there fucking creative directing away. Be yes. like, no, move those five roses over to that side. That is not right. And he, that I sort of appreciate. Yes, he is fully he is fully dialed in with all the tones of the <laughs> colors and like the like the ski, like at the, at all the aesthetic Kanye cares about right he cares right. about it deeply right um and even the placement in the home they'd like move furniture so that they could like create a full art installment of flowers <laughs> in their home it was more for him than her let's be real i think probably but now it's become almost like a tr kardashian trope for like birthdays or mother's day or those kind of occasions tristan you, is doing it for chloe you do these over the top like flower installations travis scott is doing it for kylie travis barker is doing it for courtney now. and now it's just become passe it's become unoriginal it just feels like chris is the one who's doing all of this it's just boring to me it is boring it's also just so it's just so many it just flowers. seems like they have a number of someone where they're like you know you know call brad or you know call julio like, or whatever bring in the team i'm convinced that like a couple days before any of these you know big events happen that chris sends out like a group message to all the men uh -huh. and is like hey just, just a, a reminder, reminder. <laughs> mother's day is coming up here's the name of uh you here's know bob <laughs> bob's florals you know how much courtney loves a rose That's here's a I'm color saying. palette That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Don't forget, call Brad, and if Brad's not available, here's Julio as a backup. <laughs> Chris is literally in the florist. She's at Bob's Florals, and she's cutting the stems. She's like, wrong color, wrong color. Like, she has it all completely dialed like, Brad, in. the color of love. <laughs> Yellow, yeah. the color of friendship. Yeah, I, when I saw that, when I saw Travis's, it was like, this is, there are one million of roses in these, like, you know, I don't know marble or that was bizarre to me too the the actual thing itself was, yeah it was it's like it was like a giant urn full of flowers that probably a pedestal it was a like pedestal. A, it was like a but it was like a gray marble pedestal it like stone. I didn't like it and it was probably weighed probably each one of the three weighed at least like a hundred pounds I'd be like why the fuck do you have these in my entryway get them out now I'd be like I guess they're no I wouldn't so, I'd be like they're beautiful I guess they're so rich that like you can just make a call and like everyone can take care of it for you. Do you think they just like pick up that whole thing and just like dump it in the trash? I was just looking at all of that. And I know that like, I don't know, it's just making me sad thinking of just like how, how soon they're all going to die. I know. It's just a lot of flowers. They spritz them for like four days and then just They probably the have can. someone, they were so rich. They probably have someone who is watching them 24 hours a day. They mm. have flower security. And then they're like picking any petal that is like browning around <laughs> yes, the edges. They're no, they're no, because whenever... I'm telling you, I've noticed that whenever um, Kim would post, 
She'd like post the same flower arrangement like a week later and there was not a single brown petal or like it just it was too perfect. Interesting. Flower security. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, uh, that's the Kardashian theory and I feel like we I'm holding to it. Now I was surprised that Travis's um Floral arrangements didn't include like skulls and like rock and roll stuff. I hope you guys know, right? Too, it's not like we're like Kardashian stands. It's just like funny to. It's just like fun to talk about. Oh, do people hope, think we're Kardashian stands? I don't know. I just want to like throw that out there. You know, it's like we're not like Car- like it's just silly fun. It's like talking like, about the royal family. It's just like who? The, actually, yeah, they are. Do, the royal do you think I actually give States. a fuck? I do. If you think that, I, I definitely <laughs> do. <laughs> well. <laughs> Wait, wait, do people think we're stands because we love we love them? No, I don't know. I'm just giving a disclaimer. I really don't I don't think I've heard anyone say that, but like I feel like we mention them a lot, but it's like they're like America's royal family. Yeah, I mean I don't think you can you can't just pass by them very easily. Plus like pop culture is by nature like flippant and problematic and all these other things. Like it's not that deep. Just giving that disclaimer in case anyone's like, you guys always talk about the Kardashians. Yeah, you know, it's fun in these trying times <laughs> <laughs> to talk about flower arrangements and like to shit on to shit on like a twenty thousand yeah, dollar flower arrangement. Yeah. And be like, that's tacky. When when life is hard, I like to go criticize Courtney's hundred thousand dollars worth of flowers because, you know, that that's I mean, that those, realistically, those I'd say it's probably like 40, 40 K. No, I don't think. No, probably like probably Kim's like, definitely were the Kim ones oh were like a hundred thousand dollars. I'd say like clo- I would say Courtney's. This is just a guess as the granddaughter of a florist. I really actually don't know shit, but pr- I would say like like probably closer to like six k. I would say for Courtney's. Really? How many did, did they have? Those three three full urns. Six <laughs> k. I don't mm-hmm. think they could be more t- than two thousand dollars each. Well, I listen. could be wrong. They probably priced the. Do you think they jack the prices up? They're like, oh, you know, Brad and Julio are but like, course, oh, it's Travis I'd Barker. Like, That's gonna be mm, twenty two thousand dollars. They're not gonna, you know, it's like they're not gonna ask. They're not gonna do a double take and be like, how much? They, like they're just gonna be like, however it can get delivered fast enough. Uh-huh. Like you know, intentionally, if I was a florist dealing with a Kardashian, I would only choose flowers that are like out of season, so they're insanely expensive. Genius. So I'd be like, these ones would look the best fully out of season although probably their assistants do it and don't disclose who the person is for unless it is their family person true very true very true which i'm sure there is like a beverly hills well listen if if you have if you have an issue you know with uh, hearing us talk about the kardashians understood but i will say here they are employing florists everywhere (laughs) the flower biz remains alive and well because of the kardashians uh once a week because somehow they have some sort of damn celebration every week there's some birthday party some elaborate gigantic party for some sort of occasion like stormy's first tooth let's have a hundred thousand people over and uh stormy's first tooth she gets a um white bengal tiger under her pillow (laughs) a baby one as her first tooth gift oh lord lord help us um well but how was your mother's day (sighs) how was my mother's day i actually cried a lot this mother's day don't want to talk about it okay no it's fine we can't talk about it i was just got emotional because my mom posted do you know who ann voskamp is she's like a christian author who wrote a thousand gifts yes 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 her her social media is pretty fire not gonna lie and she posted on mother's day this thing which i reposted her caption on my story because i loved it but um um oh she follows me now um, boss camp does? Yeah, she- <laughs> score <laughs> okay. Um, okay basically it was this post my mom posted on her story which is like uh the work of every parent is to give the best they know how now and the work of every child is to forgive their parents the best they can now Aww. and yeah and the whole That's caption beautiful. is like you're not going to know what to do when your kids grow up. Buy a Mother's Day card for you while they tell their friends, their therapists, and their own kids that you got so much wrong. You just have to know that you'll humbly own it because they aren't wrong. And she basically has this whole caption about how, like, mm. you are going to fuck up as a parent and you are going to traumatize your kids. Yeah, of course. And the only thing you're going to do is admit that you're wrong mm-hmm. and just be humble because most of brokenness doesn't come from the actual broken actions, but the inability to admit that you were wrong. That is so, it's so, that's so good. Right? The idea of like one day being able to give that to like Ember, for instance, like when she comes to me and is 
angry justifiably you about something this, that I've yeah. done that I can look at her and go, I'm so sorry. Yeah. And you're, you're right. Yeah. And this is, you know, I don't know, just being able to, to validate your kids' experiences yeah. that were negative with you. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And then the flip side of it, because... <laughs> I posted and then to some people it was like, I wish my mom would read this, you know, and like admit. But then the other side of it is like, you know, forgiving your parent as best you yes, can. So yes. even if they're not going to own up to it, it's like, oh, how can I how can I know that they were just trying to do their best, and even though they may not admit to it now? Giving and them that's grace. the thing. Yeah, give them, because because things change. I know even in recent like I would say this past year personally with my mom has been like game changing for our relationship mm. like there's been so much we will always have been close but we're so different we butt heads like crazy and there's been so much this year where she's like I've I started to like forgive and then because mm. I was able to forgive again not coming from a toxic relationship yeah like just you know your typical right family right and forgiveness also doesn't mean just being cool with of someone course, like you can course. forgive someone and never talk to them right. again exactly but just having those conversations with her that that were like hey like you know i know i've i've said these things to you before that were upsetting to me or hard for me but i just want to let you know like i know that you did your very best and mm. i know you love me so mm. much and when i was able to accept that now there's been this like transformative mm. like where she's coming to me going like with humility with humility going like i just wanted to let you know i was thinking about this and if i would have been in your shoes that would have been really tough and i apologize like and just mm. and so it, you can't give up sometimes if again it, i'm not talking about a toxic or when you need to have boundaries but you know with me i knew that that we could have because we've always been close and it's always been relatively healthy you know yeah. that there could be that that moment and it's been like incredible for our relationship well and again never not coming from anything like extreme abuse or any of that but I even know with toxic people in my life I've uh struggled with holding that against them because I have a reason to mm. not forgive them true and then being like well regardless of whether or not they're going to be in my life anymore I still need to like in my head and in my heart try to extend some grace and understanding knowing that I have no idea where they're coming from totally. in their life totally so I started I read that and and I it just made me emotional and so I was just kind of like thinking a lot about my mom and knowing how hard she tried in all the ways to to do the best that she could and so I just called her and I was like hey mom you know like how's Mother's Day Aww. going and you know when you're you know when you're like yeah, talking to someone like, and you're like <laughs> and you're like oh I don't want to go here I don't yeah. want to go here and it took like two minutes and I was just like it's like, I just want to say, like, I know you were just Aww. such, like, a perfect mom. And I was like, isn't it? She was like, I was not a perfect mom. I was like, no, but you did your best. You're like, you're so inspiring to me. Like, ah. So it was very emotional. I felt a lot better after that. But it was just like, I don't know why. I felt very, uh, well, my mom and I have gone through some stuff in the past year, too, where I felt like our relationship was tested, you know, in high school and college of, like, me living my own life but that was almost more difficult for her than it yeah. was for me yeah. you know because I was just like I'm gonna do what I'm gonna have to do and you're gonna have to just like accept it and then now that I'm a parent there's like certain weird conflicts that you know happen with like parenting and of I've course. had to get really I've had to really like suck it up and be courageous enough to be honest with her mm -hmm. and be forthcoming about the things that bother me and she's been really gracious in that so our dynamic too has shifted so I feel like I have a new appreciation, not just for my mom, but like the journey it is of your relationship with your mother. Mm. And and honestly, really just kind of like we're, when are we releasing Ari's episode? Is that next week? Next week, next Tuesday. We just recorded a fantastic episode um, with a great guest, but we briefly brought up motherhood stuff. And I just feel like in the past year or so, I've realized too that part of the reason so many of us have trauma with our mom is because our moms were the ones that were there. Mm. And this is not the case for everyone. But if you have two okay, parents. Shoot me right in the heart with an arrow. That's so intense. If yeah. you have two parents and one yeah. is with you 80% of the time, yeah. then probably 80% of the trauma is going to come from yeah. that person. Yeah. And Ooh. I've just realized that starting to parent and being like, wait, but I'm the one that's with them all the time. So I'm the one that's fucking them up the most. <laughs> Greg, take that. <laughs> and having more grace yeah. in that, you know, yeah, and like hearing course. Gray and other people talk about their moms and being like, dude, your mom was the one that mm. was forced to sacrifice like her life for you. I straight up like I have chills all over my body. I'm thinking about conversations that I have had recently with some 
people who are close in my life who have a problem with their mom but are like very close to their dad and the fact of the matter is that like the people I'm thinking of right. their dads weren't around that often eggs yeah and I've seen and, of and being course, like why is- are mom and dad like when there's divorce happening it's like how did yeah yeah, yeah. no yeah 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 yeah, and it's like yep. I'm sure, and I've had this conversation with someone close to my life where I was like, I'm sure if your dad was taking care of you 10 hours out of the day, you'd probably have way more shit held against him than you do against your mom. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, like, give her a fucking break. Yeah. Ooh. Anyway, that's I'm gonna, but that's just been a real rel- revelatory thing that I've had in my mind a lot over the past year. Yeah. And- it ain't fair. It ain't right. You know, <laughs> it ain't fair. It ain't it, it's right. not not that it's not fair or right to yeah. hold people trauma. No, but, but of course, it, it's of not course. right that all the burden falls on us to be everything yeah. for kids. And yeah. I was talking with Evan about that the other day because of the, the pandemic. We were talking about like positive parts of this. And one of the things that I was telling Ev is I was like, he, Evan had been so, so busy um, leading up to everything. And the, 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 the he years, was very busy. He was, would be gone. And, and then when she was, before you and I met, when she was little, he'd be gone for like a couple months at a time on tour or whatever. So he was really busy and all of a sudden pandemic hit. He was about to be gone in 2020, like a ton. Like literally like like eight months out of maybe like nine months, <laughs> like, like constantly. And, uh, and everything hit and it was like, you know, obviously and understandably so, he was so anxious about everything yeah. and it was such a huge huge dynamic shift but it was like he's had uh, over a year now to spend so much time with ember and like he was getting all sorts of emotional because he was just like i feel like i've been able to like be her dad and like it's so Mm -hmm. close to her this year um and he's like and now i don't want to be gone all the time like i want to be around way more i want to figure out how to how to be like that our parenting like that our daughter sees us like 50 50 like that it's that you know because he didn't have that and whatever. And, and, and I was like, yeah, no, it's so true. That's, that is something positive with the pandemic. A lot of, a lot of uh, dads were able to, yeah. Or both, whatever parent is the one who's currently, you know, oh, right. maybe out and about working is able to potentially be with the little one more. Well, and it's more appreciation. Like for, if there is a, another person that oh is, God. uh, I, I more remember the work. I remember three months into the pandemic. You're like, yeah, bitch. I know you all of a sudden we were like, we were eating dinner in a full breakdown. And he's like, I'm sorry. I didn't appreciate you. This is really hard. And I was like, I know it is. <laughs> Nobody says that. But thank that's you. the thing. We must just soldier on and carry <sighs> our crosses. <sighs> mm-hmm. You'll learn one day. One day you will learn. One day. But, well, I'm glad it was emotional for you. Yeah, how was yours? Um, you know, it was, um, well, let's, let's take a pause and then I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell you <laughs> about what, good. I, what I happened with mine. I can't, now you've got me uh, it's excited. It's a cliffhanger. Okay. It's really, <laughs> um, broads, listen, I know 2021 is already halfway over, but better late than never. I'm declaring that this year is the year we all optimize our life and stop doing things we don't want or don't need to do for me. And probably for a lot of you, that means going to the post office, long lines, small parking lots, expensive postage. The case against going to the post office is a strong one, which is why I just don't go anymore. Instead, I get all my shipping done with the help of stamps.com. Stamps.com is such a huge time saver, you guys. It brings the post office to you, whether you ship out boxes for your small business or you're shipping back some impulse online purchases, guilty. Stamps.com can do it all. Simply use your computer to print official U.S. postage 24-7 for any letter, any package, any class of mail, anywhere you want to send. And once you're ready to go, you can schedule a pickup or drop off your packages, and that's really all there is to it. And the savings, broads, oh, the savings, they're so good. When you use stamps.com, you'll get discounts you can't even get at the post office, like 40% off post office rates and up to 66% off UPS USPS shipping rates, excuse me. With stamps.com, you'll save tons of time and tons of money. That type of stuff adds up quick. You don't realize it until you check your uh, accounts later and you realize how much is going into postage. Lots of savings. What are you waiting for? Stop wasting time going to the post office and go to stamps.com instead. There's no risk. And with our promo code chatty, you get a special offer that includes a four week trial plus free postage and a digital scale. No long term commitments or contracts. Just go to stamps.com, click at the mic at the top of the homepage, type in chatty. That's stamps.com, promo code chatty. Stamps.com, never go to the post office ever again. 
broads, if you know me, then you know when these warmer months roll around, something in me just comes alive. It's like more daylight, warmer temperatures, and this could just be in my head, but everyone just seems a little happier. I certainly right? am. Yeah, I feel better. I feel better. Uh, just a few of the many reasons that summer is my favorite season. And in preparation for summer, I just had to customize my newest season's Fab Fit Fun box because it's full of all the <laughs> summer essentials. Box? <laughs> oh, I love that. That was great. If you've been a Chatty Broads listener for a while now, you know Fab Fit Fun is a long time sponsor of the show but now it's even better because fab fit fun is now the only subscription box that is 100 percent customizable 100 yes. percent. i Wild. love that we love the custom the options. new perk <laughs> is only available to members so if you've been on the fence consider this a sign because the product options for this season's box are ones you do not want to miss wow hundred percent. That's so cool. So good. I've had quite a few FabFitFun boxes and without fail, I am always shocked at some of the products they're able to include. Some of the single products alone cost more than what you'll pay for the entire box. And it also allows me to try a variety of things um, I might not have picked up in the store. Of course, I always end up finding a few new lifetime favorites. I don't know how many times I've gotten a FabFitFun box, found a new product because of mm. it. And now I am like, it is a staple, you know, in my bathroom, in my bedroom, yeah. whatever. Like they have the best products. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, order your summer box today. Sign up now. You can stack amazing products like the Summer Fridays CC Me Serum oh, so or good. the Somersault Neoprene Beach Tote when you customize. And don't forget, use coupon code CHATTY21 for $10 off your first box at www.fabfitfun.com. And plus, for a limited time only, annual members will receive an extra gift valued at $125 with their purchase. What? What? While Sign supplies me up. last. Okay. <laughs> that just stopped me in my tracks. That's coupon code CHATTY21 for $10 off your first box at www.fabfitfun.com. I had no, I'm going to have to do this immediately. I literally, I'm like, was is this a typo? Is that a typo? No. no. Wow. Dang. Okay, FabFitFun. We see you. <laughs> we see you. Maybe that's what I should have gotten myself for Mother's Day. Um, okay, so my Mother's Day, it was it was really nice. Um, the only thing is I was a little out of it because of my dental work. Mm. Um, bras, I've talked about my teeth before. On, <sighs> yeah, I forgot we were talking about dentists. On shit. the podcast. Oh. And listen, I don't want to hear it because I'm doing it now, okay? But I was asking for accountability because your girl had a really, really, really bad dental experience when I was pregnant with Ember and I have had like crazy fear of the dentist. What happened? Since. Can you um, relive it for us? Can you please relive your trauma? Yeah, I can do that for you. <sighs> for the pod. <laughs> Save the pod. Um, so I ended up getting a major tooth issue like that I needed a um, a root canal and a crown when I was almost nine months pregnant with Ember um, and it like couldn't wait. It was like emergency dental work. So I went to my regular dentist and they're like, you're so pregnant right now. Like we're really worried. It's so far back in your, in your, uh, mouth. If we tilt you, you're going to get nauseous. You're probably going to get lightheaded because you're really pregnant. Also, we can't give you like laughing gas. We can't give you like anything that you would typically what? and certain medications. Don't they give you laughing gas when you're in labor sometimes? I don't know. They, I think they do. That's whatever. Weird. They weren't comfortable yeah, doing yeah, yeah. it. And um, and it was like I I if I would have had more time, I would have checked to see other. I'm like, does anyone else offer this uh -huh. as an option? But I, I just had to like it was really bad. Um, And it like hit overnight. Like it was all fine. Um, And then um, and so then the the this specific specialist was not comfortable, was not comfortable really giving me much pain numbing medication so i had to have a root canal and i and it was it was horrible it was a, it was probably the worst pain like it's the worst pain i can think of that i've ever had and on top of it too i kept getting so lightheaded and nauseous okay, wait i don't know if this is like accurate but if you were like put in that much pain and distress couldn't you have gone into labor because you were in so that's much what, pain and distress like wouldn't was, it have been better to just give you the fucking pain meds that's what i was thinking but i don't know because i'm not I don't a know either and i was i legit but that seems like a legit thing. it's one of those things that if i would have had like the presence of mind now i would have but i was so scared totally no and, no, like, no i totally get it you know i would have I mean? just gone along with i was it like too. whatever you guys say like no I'll i would have too i've just been like okay and you probably don't think that they're just gonna fucking drill into your teeth that that's and I, yeah, I just, pain I just, like you don't think that's gonna no. happen and it's like there were they were able to give me a little bit of like some topical numbing things and whatever and so i there was a there was 
some, a little bit of pain meds, but for a root canal, you know, it's a whole thing. And so it, what it, the fuck? It, That's and, fucked up. And dude. it ended up taking to get it done. It took about two and a half hours because every few minutes they had to sit me back up because I would get so nauseous, like because I was so pregnant about because it's like my farthest back molar. So I kept getting lightheaded and nauseous and I already didn't like the dentist. And he was like the dentist was so kind and wonderful, but it was just like the worst experience. Like and so since then, horrified. And I know that now I can get pain meds, but it's still just the memory that I'm like, I see a dentist and I'm like, ha! Ah! <laughs> like it scares the shit out of me no that makes complete sense so i um avoid That's really scary i avoid at all costs so this broken tooth that i had um i thought it was i thought it was my crown had broken so i was like oh the, the uh this broken tooth that i have it's my crown is broken but like the roots cut off because of the root canal so like it's okay but i'm in a lot of pain and so i kind of just like just dealt with the pain for a while because yeah. I'm so scared. Well, went to the do- went to the dentist and I was like, yeah, it's a broken crown. And they checked it and they're like, um, girl, your crown is on the other side and it's not broken. That was a filling. Your roots like hanging out. I don't know what that means, but it sounds awful. Like my nerve. And so they're like, it, they're like, how are you? And I'm like, I don't know. I just deal with it because I'm so scared of the dentist. So basically what ended up happening is I thought I was going to have to get my full blown oral sur- surgery. Um, uh, a couple days ago, I only, I had to get two root canals. Um, but I had to be scheduled for in a week and a half. I have to, um, go get a couple teeth extracted and I have to get implants, which is where they drill a screw into your jawbone and put a new tooth in like a fake one. So I get, (laughs) so I'm very nervous about this, but my new dentist is a God. I'm obsessed. He literally like, he's like, I know you're so scared, but we need to do a lot of work in your teeth. And he's like, you need to, he's like, you got weak teeth naturally. You need to like, you need to upkeep these chompers and you need to start doing it now. So we need to to get rid of your fear of the dentist. He's like, and I'm going to, I'm going to help you do that. And here's a Xanax. And here's a Xanax. (laughs) But I was like, with the root canal, I was like, give me the laughing gas, put the head, my headphones in, whatever. And he's like, with your permission, I'll have the laughing, like I'll have the nitrous here. Um, but we're gonna, I want to try to help you get over this. He's like, I promise you, you will not feel anything. Love that. And he's like, so if you're okay with it, I'll have the nitrous here. We won't use it right now. The second you need it, I'll give it to you. Please don't put headphones on so you can hear the drilling. And I know it's scary, but like you need to hear this and it's going to help retrain your brain slowly to not be scared of it. Exposure I prom- therapy. He's doing yes. exposure therapy yes, with you. Yes, he was a king. And, and so I, he did my root canals and like, I literally, the first 20 minutes, Becca, when I tell you I was shaking and tears were just pouring down my face because I was so scared, but I didn't feel like, I mean, just some pressure, but like he was so quick. I didn't feel anything. And I was like, that's so awesome. oh my God, King. That's so great. Cause like, that's a medical person, like taking the extra step to really care about you. Like beyond just trying to get the job Amazing. done. Shout out Smile Angels of Beverly Hills. Yes. <laughs> Shout, Shout fuck out. out. I mean, granted, I don't like having to drive all the way to Beverly yeah, Hills, but like he, he's amazing. And, um, and so then when he was like, okay, you got to come in in two weeks, we're going to have to start slowly doing some major we're gonna remove all of your teeth <laughs> we're, gonna all your teeth. So we're gonna have to slowly start doing some oral surgery on you and he's like it's gonna it's you know it's gonna be uncomfortable afterwards whatever but he's like we're gonna do it and he's like and, and guess what he's like i'm gonna do all that i'm gonna extract that tooth i'm gonna put that implant in no laughing gas he's like we're gonna do it together and i was like i don't know if i'm ready he's like we're gonna do it and so i think i'm just gonna try to conquer my fears so God bless. Yeah. So anywho, uh, I was a little sore because I'd gotten a couple of root canals, et cetera. Oh, yeah. Mother's um, Day. Mother's Day. And I was also on a little bit of pain meds. So I was a little bit out of it. I was just a little uncomfy and also a little <laughs> bit traumatized. <laughs> yeah. Understandable. Dude, when I uh, did, I have I ever told you about my or- oral surgery I had to get when I was a young teen? No. So I always had really straight teeth okay, and I didn't think I was going to need to get braces. And then they told me when I went to the orthodontist, because my brother and sister were getting braces, that my canines never came in. I had baby canines and all my other teeth had fallen out except those. Mm -hmm. And basically my canines were parallel, sitting parallel in the Uh, roof of my mouth. Yes. 
So you know what they had to do? So I didn't want to do laughing gas because I was afraid I was going to tell. I, You know, I always had secrets. So I was really scared. I was going to like say something. Sure. That happened to me. Continue. Oh, I'm we'll talk about that. Yeah. I was afraid I was going to like reveal something to uh -huh. my mom. Yeah. Understandable. Yeah. So instead we did the localized anesthetic. <sighs> so they had to extract my teeth, you know, like, and there was, ooh, Oh, I get nauseous thinking about it. Like I could see. I might have to put my feet up. <laughs> the dentist white, like his his he, his knuckles were like white because he was like putting so much pressure. Like I don't know if it was him removing. I don't actually remember exactly what the part was where there was so much pressure. But what they had to do was they had to extract my two teeth. Mm -hmm. Then they had to cut the roof of my mouth open. Yep, don't pass out. Okay, continue. They had to then. Up inside the roof of my mouth, attach tiny chains, chains, little metal chains, like very, very thin, but, Wait, but literally to chain the, to the roof chain of links. your mouth. Listen, listen, listen. Chain links. They attached them. I don't know if they glued them or bracketed them to the teeth up inside the roof of my mouth and then put brackets on the back of these teeth and attached the chains to the bracket. So every month they would tighten the chains to slowly turn my adult canine teeth down into place to pull them into where they were supposed to go. A couple thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> so I literally had tiny change going up through the roof of my mouth. Number one, I am so sorry you had to go through that. That is, sounds absolutely horrific. It was. Number two, I am so amazed by dentistry. What What the fuck? Who came up with that idea, right? You know what's so sad is that when I went in, and I felt really bad when I went in and got my work done with my yeah. new dentist, who I'm literally going to marry. I love him so much. <laughs> um, he, my smile king. My, my smile, smile angel. He's my smile angel king. <laughs> um, afterwards, I'm just like, my mouth is just like raw and bloody. I'm like, am I your smile angel now? <laughs> My face is just lopsided because both of my root canals were on one side and like fully <laughs> numb. Um, no, but uh, but I came in and I was just like, so You're I'm like, like, am I your smile queen? Because I have a crown. Oh, no, okay, no, no, no. sorry, I had to do it. Um, no, but I I uh, I I right away went in and I was like, hey, um, I'm so sorry. No offense. I'm so scared of dentists. Uh -huh. Like you horrify me. Yeah, he's like heard it before, bitch. No, he literally. He's like. He's like. Yeah. He's like. It's kind of tough. Pretty much no one likes. Like comes in and like everyone is scared of me and whatever. And he looked so sad. And I that that immediately got me going. I was like, oh, I'm I, I'm so sorry. Like you seem like a lovely guy. <laughs> and then that's what he said. He goes, I'm horrified of going to the dentist. He's like, that's why I started doing what I do. And then he, um, liar probably. No, Just kidding, I believe him. No, like the whole the whole group <laughs> that they were all then like chatting about it. Like everyone in there are like dentist phobes, like pho like have a phobia of the dentist, and that's kind of how Be they the all change got you want to see. Exactly, am I right? that's what they were talking mm -hmm. about. They're like, we want to have a different perspective <laughs> on dentistry that's like focused on the client and making sure you're as comfortable as possible and whatever. And I'm just like, oh my god, love this. Um, I yeah, go ahead. No, I just one more thing about dentists. Yeah, I want to find a really good family dentist in Long Beach, HMU, if you have any suggestions because the dentist I went to growing up. My Nana used to work at the dental office and like they were all the nicest oh, smile angels, yeah. not love, smile angels, love smile angels. Hills, but they were, they were smile <laughs> angels. So like up through 20, aside from my horrible orthodontic experiences, they were just like they would explain every little thing. And I so I never was scared of the dentist. Oh my God. Never. You, and maybe, then now I started going to a new dentist. And I'm like, I like the dent. My family dentist. They would always explain what they were about to do and would say like, "This might hurt just yeah. a little bit," and would prepare me. Not this new dentist. They're just digging in there. I'm like, huh, duh, oh, uh, this is scary. Uh, uh. No, check out Smile Angels. Listen, the whole time when I was getting my root canal, one of the the hygienists was holding my hand the entire time. That's so nice. And was like petting me. She's like, "You got this. You're good." It'd you're be good. like, "Don't touch me," but thank you. <laughs> she asked me before That's consent. Sweet. She's like, do you want me to hold your hand and put my hand? And I was like, yes, please. And then I was crying so and she was like walking me through it. That's oh so my God, cute. what a bunch. Okay. What a bunch of cuties. But um, okay, so with the with the lap, the nitrous. Okay. <gasps> oh my God. Yeah, I forgot <laughs> you got a story most, to tell This is one of my top so most embarrassing moments ever. 
Oh, so my I God. used to have oh, a family. I used to have a family dentist. He is wonderful, lovely, fantastic guy, um, <gasps> friend of our families, oh. and used to go to the church that Evan and I grew oh. up in. Yep, I knew. And he gonna, was oh. like really involved in the church. Okay, and uh, but I would love to go to him because he was so gentle, and he he knew that I was scared of the dentist, and so he would like help yeah. me out. And this is before my huge phobia, but I was always been a little nervous. Um, so then Evan and I were dating. Oh God. Evan and I were dating and um, I needed to get, I don't know, a filling or something. And I was like, hit me up with that nitrous, bud. We've never done nitrous. It's laughing gas. Yeah, I know. I've just never oh, done it. Oh, you've never it. done it. Okay. Weird. Um, You've always just been too nervous. Straight edge. <laughs> uh, no, I, I was, just, I was yeah. actually really nervous the first time. I was like, what is this going to do yeah. to me? It just makes me feel so wonderful and relaxed. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I have a, I have a, a thing back here. You want some? I'm just like... <laughs> Yeah, you have like a little pile of balloons. <laughs> um, but he, so what happened was, oh my God, I was getting a filling or something. They put the laughing gas on. He was working and apparently, and he told me afterwards, he's like, I have to be honest with you. He's like, I don't want you to like, like, I don't want to like have this, like, you know, that I know. And the, the, the hygienist in the room also heard this. He's like, you, <laughs> you don't. You said when you were under love, and this is a very conservative group of people. Evan's like, Evan's like pastor's son. I'm like elder's daughter, and he was like, you told us that you guys were having sex. <laughs> Apparently, I was literally just like, oh, it was like, how's Evan doing? And I was like, oh, we're good. Like, oh yeah, you guys are so cute at church. We see. You. I was like, yeah, people can be sometimes weird and judgmental with us, but it's okay. We're fine. We're just having sex. It's fine. Nobody really. And I was literally just like, say, like spilling everything. And he is like, knows both of our families is a family friend. And I have never gone back to him. I just can't. And he's such so nice that he's the type of guy who's just like, it's okay. Don't worry. Don't be embarrassed. But he wanted to let me know because there was a room full of That's people. That's so sweet that he told you. Yeah. He's very, he's lovely. But he's like, I just, he's like, I know this is awkward, but there were numerous people in here. I would have wanted to just fall through the floor and disappear forever and ever. I and don't ever. think I've ever been more red. And my fear was how do you respond? How did how like how does one respond back? To I felt that? my heart beating like crazy, and I literally was just like, "Oh, I'm so sorry if anyone was was awkward. I, I, I'm so sorry." And all I was doing was praying, praying, because mm -hmm. I was still living. We were in high school. Mm -hmm. Was that like they were? He was gonna rat me out to my what my my family or what Evan's family because we it was all in secret. We what were being nightmare. secretive about our our lovemaking, and uh, he never did. Yeah, I dentist mean, that's confidence. Takes a real <laughs> dental patient, uh, the dental patient relationship was not breached. But every once in a while, I'll see him, and I'm just like, yeah, like family gatherings because he is really close with my family. I'm like, well, remember that that uh, that one time you were there, one of the front, one of the people front row of our wedding. Just like, but I can't, I can't go back to him for dental work. The damage is done. <laughs> my worst nightmare. You lived it. You lived it. <laughs> oh, my God. I was really I scared after I got my wisdom teeth removed because I was afraid I was going to be loopy and I was going to say some shit like that to my mom yeah. when she picked me up. I was really scared. Yeah. That's so scary. I was so like 17 scary. or 18 at the time. And yeah. that makes you way more lots anxious. Of secrets. <laughs> <laughs> it makes you really anxious. I also like, you know, I, I have chill, like. Though. I was Did you get your, you got, did you get your wisdom teeth removed? No. <gasps> Honey, I know. Are you going to have to now? Well, I have one that they're going to be taking out while they're taking out other teeth. But it came in fine, and it's like, okay. But they're like, yeah, we might as well just like take it out so it doesn't move your teeth. My cheeks were so, so swollen. Oh, I know. I'm, I'm going to be a mess. My brother stole my phone and posted it on my Instagram. Oh, no. Oh, and no. And said, I'm ugly, and just posted the photo with that on Instagram. It got the most likes I had gotten in months <laughs> on my IG, my brother, the comedian. I'm scared about saying shit, too, though. Yeah, when I, when I got my wisdom teeth removed, my mom picked me up and I just was kind of like, uh, I feel like shit. I didn't like, I didn't, I when with my wisdom teeth, I wasn't like loopy. I literally just got in the car and was like, oh, I don't feel good. And then I cried because I was in pain, but I didn't. One of the my broads was like, dad, film, film yourself after like getting your teeth extracted or my whatever. My dad was, was like, fucked oh, up. My funny was story, my dad had to get his wisdom teeth removed like <laughs> probably like uh, eight years ago. So eight or nine years ago. 
it was after me. I think I was 18 or 19. And he was in the car and he was just like, I love you. Like, I love you to my mom. And then me, he was like, Becca, I love you. And he was, he, he insisted on holding my hand with me in the back seat. He was being so cute. That is adorable. And he got really sick <laughs> for whatever they gave him. So he was just like, like a little kid, like a five year old, just like projectile vomited, like all over the hallway, all over the living room. <sighs> my mom was like, in all my years, like taking care of you kids, I've never had to clean up such a disgusting mess. And then my dad was still so fucked up. We had like a hundred dollar remote, like one of those fancy ones with a touch screen, you know, that controlled all the sound systems and shit like oh that. Oh my God. And he just lost it and we never found it. Like, we don't know if he like threw it away <laughs> Like he's just like never... in the backyard, just like <laughs> oh, it. not one of these. He's just like in his brain. He's like, this is dangerous. He's just like, oh, we're not spending enough time together as a family. <laughs> I don't know, but it was really funny. <laughs> so who knows what you're gonna do? I can see you. I mean, really honestly, funny. like the plan is, is that um, you know, our friend Katie is supposed to be picking me up. Mm, well, that's a lot of fun. And taking care of me for the day because um, Evan's gonna be gone. I think that's so painful, for the first dude. day. Yeah. So I'm like, I don't know if I'm gonna be weird. Um, you know, luckily I won't say anything weird in front of Evan because Lord knows that's a little frightening. You yeah. know what I mean? Like the deepest in inside. You're just thoughts. like I want to divorce you, <laughs> <laughs> dude. I have a friend. This is not med this is not dentistry, but we have some friends who my eyes like when you said like my friend, my eyes like lit up. <laughs> like, you see on camera, I'm just like, tell You're me like, more. Tell me <laughs> they were all a, gr a couple, a group of our old time friends were all together and they all decided to do mushrooms mm -hmm, together for mm -hmm, the first mm -hmm. time. And one of the people oh, I don't like where this is going. The, one of the people publicly declared <gasps> in front of everyone that they had been having an affair for like they're like, I just have to speak my truth. I have to put it out there. Started bawling and was like, I have to be honest and was like, I've been having an affair. End of their marriage. So it's kind of beautiful. What if I say, yeah, it, no. it, I mean, it is, you know, well, I mean, like, it's unfortunate. I mean, yeah, but the truth comes to the surface, you know, in one way or another. And I'm proud true. of them for, yeah, even if it took <laughs> doing a bunch of I don't think friends. it was ideal for the other partner to have it in front of everybody. On shrooms. On shrooms. Mm -hmm. um, that's a nightmare. That's a nightmare. That's a nightmare. Oh, my but, God. Yeah. In front of your other. Oh, but maybe so I'll bad. maybe I'll take uh, <laughs> maybe I'll get my 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 teeth out and then i'll call evan and be like tell him about my 17 affairs and then i want yeah. a divorce yeah well it's got to come out one way or another <laughs> at some point the it's a joke <laughs> <laughs> so there's somebody who's gonna be like oh my god send this clip to evan she just said so what jessica as if oh he god. doesn't like edit and help edit and produce the episode I um <laughs> the i remember i took the vicodin too i took probably one or two more than i was supposed to because don't do that guys don't do that but I remember I was like laying in bed. <laughs> I was so stupid. I was like 17 and I was just like, oh, this is like, I'm going to be so cool. And I'm going to take like, I'm going to, I'm going to get high on my Vicodin yeah, right now yeah. because I feel like shit anyway. Yeah. And then I convinced myself I was going to die. And I laid there in bed and I was like, mm, goodbye, cruel world. I was like, this is the way I oh go. Oh my God. That see, was fine. See this, that, that I, I have the fear of, I relate to that. Whenever I get anything, I wasn't anxious. I was just, I was oh, literally like, oh, you gave, no, 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 you, no. You, I, you I, gave I, yourself to I the, gave myself <laughs> to the void, <laughs> to the great beyond. <laughs> I was just high on Vicodin. <laughs> it's like, this is it. Uh, oh my God. Well, I mean, Maybe I'll, I'll maybe I'll film it. Maybe I'll have Katie film it. And if it's not, if I don't, you know, reveal anything too terrible, then maybe I'll put it out there. Me well, just acting like a hot mess. Yeah, I think you will be. I can't wait. I, I, you know, It'll probably go viral. Put it on your oh, edit it down. Put it on your reels. That's I could I could do that. I uh, capitalize. I don't have. Um, I'm not affected by by uh by medication super intensely normally. It's it's I'm pretty like. I don't get super loopy or I don't have like, it's not a huge effect on me. So I don't know. We'll see. Have you ever been put under before? No, but I'm not getting put under. That's what I'm for saying. Your, for your wisdom teeth? No, he's keeping me awake and he's not letting me have laughing gas. He's just going to numb me. Okay. I have to and say he's going to take they... my teeth out and then, and then I'm going to be awake while he takes a drill and puts a metal drill into my jawbone 
and then takes skin from my cheeks and puts it around or something like that and then adds a new tooth. Okay, so that was I'm gonna be like that was a scary <laughs> fully coherent. No, that was, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. That was a fairly similar procedure yeah. to what how do we done with me? I think they had to do a little drill to oof. Mm. I'm really I'm actually um, like I think I've been laying a- around and like just I I lay in bed like before, when you know when you're trying to fall asleep at night and you're just like this I keep thinking about like two weeks from now being like oh my god I'm not trying okay wait I'm gonna let's take a quick pause and then okay. I'm gonna tell I'm gonna tell you more but let's okay. take a pause real quick talk okay. about uh talk about caviar and okay. drive oh I'm gonna be using this a lot in the next oh, couple yeah, weeks when I'm home okay in my house we are big food delivery people not even just for big meals but also for simple things like a pizza on a Friday night or bagels on Sunday morning or even maybe some sushi for a date night in uh, there's just some stuff that tastes better when you don't have to make it and for all of those things we use caviar our favorite food delivery app I like the name too it makes me feel very fancy me and cheap. too maybe you can order caviar with caviar I have to agree with you there uh, caviar is the best they focus on local restaurants and options you won't find on other apps that's why they're always my go-to when i'm the hunt for a on the hunt for a local hidden treasure whether it's a spot i've been to a hundred times or something brand new i'm trying in fact using caviar i've actually been able to find so many new places that have become my favorites there's a taco place down the street that i must have driven past 25 times and i've never noticed but i saw it on caviar and now i literally go at least once or twice a month yeah also broads you can get so much more than just meals delivered with caviar maybe you're craving some late night candy caviar's got you covered or maybe you finished off your last bottle of wine have friends on the way caviar can bring you a fresh bottle in no time i can't even count the times that caviar has come through to save the day or the night it's wonderful and just for our listeners, Caviar is giving you 20% off your first order. Just enter promo code chatty at checkout. That's 20% off your first order with promo code chatty. Download the Caviar app and use offer code chatty for 20% off your first order. Okay, story time broads. A, a few months back, I decided to start making little easy changes in my everyday life to improve my health. And the simplest way to do that was by switching up some of the contents of my kitchen. Look it, you know, your girl loves some snacks. But maybe not all the processed things. You know, we're just trying to cut down on the Cheetos. Yeah, you, we, can, we can limit those a little bit. And I was looking for delicious snacks elsewhere, delicious foods, but like good quality. And honestly, the best quality that I can find when I'm talking food, when I'm talking kitchen cleaning supplies, lifestyle, all of that is through Thrive Market. It's the only place I turn to these days. Thrive Market is the online membership based market on a mission to make healthy living easy and affordable for everyone. And honestly, they have at all on thrive market you're going to find everything from organic and essential groceries and clean beauty to safe supplements and non-toxic home products even sustainable seafood clean wine so much more i've ordered almost everything from thrive from makeup to frozen fish to wine to hazelnuts like everything you can imagine they have um it's so and good more. and once you discover thrive you're like why have i not been yeah. The whole time. It was one of those services for me. Listen, every time I log on to Thrive, I end up finding so many more things that I've discovered that are so delicious. It's become, it has become a staple in my life constantly. And I'm talking about the money savings too, okay? On an average, members save $32 per order, plus orders over 49 are uh, or more are shipped for free and delivered with their carbon, uh, carbon neutral shipping from their zero waste warehouse. Thrive is amazing. Join Thrive Market to get $20 off your first order and an exclusive free gift. The free gifts are really good, too. They're not crap. No, they're the first great time I logged gifts. on, I was like, a whole bottle of ashwagandha for free for little old me? Girl, they they give you the good good free oh. gifts anyway the only way to get this offer though is by going to thrivemarket.com slash chatty that's t-h-r-i-v-e market.com slash chatty to get the exclusive offer of twenty dollars off your first order and a free gift you can't get this offer anywhere else go to thrivemarket.com slash chatty I think my favorite thing too is like it's always stuff from Thrive that I normally would get from other grocery stores and Thrive somehow has it for like less expensive and it's like these brands that I spend a fortune on elsewhere. I also like that it's curated so like their Mm -hmm. beauty section like I'll go to their beauty for instance and I'm like oh I know everything in their beauty section is going to be like clean or sustainable or like have some sort of edge to it mm-hmm. so then it's nice to browse instead of being overwhelmed oh, yeah. by going on sephora and then like yes they make it you know so easy saying? too with all the little boxes you can like check everything that yeah. you want and they have it just dialed i love it yeah so good um, anywho okay what i was gonna say was 
Yeah, they did my all my oral surgery because I was afraid to go completely under and do a laughing gas for yeah. all the reasons that we've talked about. Uh-huh. And I also, I know I'm being a bad friend by telling you this, but it was pretty gnarly. Like you yeah. kind of, you could feel the blood kind of like dripping back and like sort of taste it. And it's just kind of oh, like, for sure. kind of yeah. horrible. Yeah. But it sounds like the smile angels will make it a good experience. Like I actually do trust them to give I you trust, a good experience. I trust the smile angels. And I, they sound like the kind of people where if you're just like, I'm over this, they'll be like, let's let's gas you up, queen. Yeah, yeah. I, you know? I know I know that he's got it right there for me, but I won't be going under under. I will be aware of what's going on. Yeah. And maybe I'll come back, uh, you know, in, in two weeks when I get this done and I'll sit down at this podcast and be like, worst experience of my exactly? life, regretted regretted immediately. When are you getting it done? What's two the weeks? date? On a fr- it's a Friday in- in like a week and a half. Right? Oh, that's right. We talked about this. Oh, broads, this brings me to something that I just realized we were talking about. Okay. Cause we, I was like, oh yeah, you're right. It's right. You're getting it the day after our photo shoot. Cause we're doing a photo shoot. Cause Yay! we're going to be photographing. Oh my God. Merch. merch, 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 merch. It's just too good. It's too good. <laughs> I'm alive. Love yeah. We've got merch. some, we got some killer stuff coming. And we were able to pick out some eco-friendly options yes. for the merch, too. Yes. Um, yeah, I'm really excited. Posters. Great posters. You can have our faces all over your walls. I'm really excited. Yeah, also, like, the bros merch, I don't think it's going to be released at the same time. But, like, when you guys see the chatty bros merch, you're going to shit yourself. You're yeah. literally going to shit yourself and you're going to be like, oh, You're going to poop shit. them pants. I just, I just, <laughs> you're going to be like, oh, shit. <laughs> so immature for people who say <laughs> that is kind of a wild thing to say is when you say i shit <laughs> myself shit my like <laughs> have you ever done that shit my pants no no uh, me neither and like when i did like a have you ever on my instagram yeah. ever it was like poop your pants shit your pants have you ever pooped yourself <laughs> I, I feel just like, kind of no. I, I actually am really happy that you haven't because I honestly it's I feel we're constipated. I feel, yeah, that's what it is. I feel judged sometimes because when I'm like, no, I have I don't have a shit my pants story. I'm like, no. People are always like, what the I'm hell? I'm like, no, I don't have irritable bowel syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> like I got whatever the opposite of irritable bowel syndrome is. I'm yeah. clogged up like you would not believe. Yeah, actually things are a lot better for me, but now yeah. in my I actually life. Have, I'm regular. In yeah, these me days. too. Me Woo! too. We're doing good. You we think love I love unconstipated like, queens. <laughs> But not like, no, I mean, the amount of times where I've been like urgent, like I got to go. Right. That's been like five times in my life. Yeah, I've uh, the only time that I've been like, I'm going to shit myself is when I've been outrageously ill. Exactly. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm not just like casually walking. Like, yeah, in when the I got fucking like rotavirus in Mexico. <laughs> like, that's what we're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. When I got like when I got a full <laughs> parasite, then, yeah, I was I was. Did on you the, get a parasite? I did get a parasite. I did yeah when why how um can you I, give it to me is it contagious i didn't mean that in the like a please give it to me. <laughs> i was like you want me to give you my parents Remember in the office <laughs> <laughs> oh my god um i had it many years ago um and i uh what did you have i got it in india because i drank water oh, yeah. that i shouldn't have and it was my bad and i knew better and i just did it anyways cut to me 24 hours later um what did you get i tapeworms no 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 no, no. i i got a really bad parasite uh I still don't know exactly what it was because I didn't get like the records, but they had to take me to the emergency room because, <laughs> because I was for about for about 48 hours. I could not I could not stop vomiting and having having the big D and um, <laughs> <laughs> and my and my uh, fever was through the roof. Oh, yeah. Like, I couldn't walk. Oh, my God. Did, have I told you my Costa Rica story? I was in Costa Rica and I got really sick and I was literally shitting water. Yeah. Like, that's, you know, see, when you get to the, the point where you're like, am I going to die? No, that that's you, that you're like, I'm at death's door right now. <laughs> like, like truly, truly. Like, I'm I, at I death's cannot door. take a sip of water without it no. just going right through me. No, it was a whole, it was a whole thing. And yeah. I, and I, uh, I was in the, I, they took me to the ER yeah. and, um, oh God, that's you know, so horrible. and I was, I was so sick that I like peed the bed because oh, I couldn't God. move and I didn't even realize that I was peeing. 
Um, and then I had to use it like use do the big d and they had to like pick me up and like put me in the wheelchair and like get because I, I i literally i had nothing I left in my body a bedpan no no i didn't i didn't they were they i mean i have again i still don't know what i had but whatever they did slash gave me helped me real quick and i was within like 24 hours i was okay i was weak but i was okay but i had been like i was not in good shape um, did you, did you ever watch the Discovery Channel show Monsters Inside Me? Um, you know, tried to watch it. Full anxiety. Uh, yeah. Like, that is so scary. It's so horrific. That's so, so horrific. Send us your parasite stories, broads. Oh my god, I do not want your parasite stories. <laughs> Send them to Send Becca. Them to Jess. I do not want your parasite stories. Send them stories. to Jess. I have like, like, Happy tape. birthday, Jess. <laughs> send them on the day you know that i'm going to be potentially mm-hmm. going under so i'm having this May full, like <laughs> like straight up um uh tapeworms scared the shit out of me any sort of buggies on the body yeah. like i oh don't God, do well with <laughs> i don't do well with you saying buggies on the body was the worst thing i've ever had to hear <laughs> buggies on the body but like whenever you know whenever people are like you know there are a million <laughs> bugs in your eyebrows i'm like i don't no, that's not true well maybe your eyebrows <laughs> But, you know, apparently you've got like, there's always stuff. No, you need to stop. No, what do you mean? Like, yeah, microscopic. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I breathe in millions of That's them too. That's what I'm too. saying. Like, no, they're uh, microscopic. They're microscopic. Shut up. But I'm just like, okay, well, it, like, I mean, it's, okay, so what? Lice is such a nice nightmare to me. It's so disgusting. I'll, I'll be real with you. No judgment to your lice situation, but no. it is one of, it is a huge fear of mine. Have you ever had lice? it? No. Just wait, Ember will give it to you one of these days. You're putting a lot of bad energy out here. <laughs> <laughs> You're telling me to tell people to send me parasites and me feeling blood dripping down my throat that I'm going to get, get lice. It, gonna get it one of these days. <laughs> you can run, but you can't hide. <laughs> They're going to come for you. <laughs> They're going to get you. <laughs> Try as you may. I can't They'll believe I haven't had they it yet. They always find you. With Ember in school mm. and everything, like, I can't believe I haven't gotten it. Yeah, I mean, it was kind of weird how we got it during the pandemic. I'm like... Yeah, that that is... It? The parks were still open. Like, did you get it from the park? Mm. I don't fucking know. Nasty. <laughs> Kids just running around, bending over the, the sand, just t- hair touching it. Ugh. <sighs> Mm-mm. so bad so disgusting i just couldn't oh my sl- i just wouldn't be able to sleep that's that's my big thing is oh this, is the sleeping situation breakdown if one of the dogs gets fleas i can't sleep yeah it's gross it's really I'm, gross. I'm like i'm like anxious and i'm like we got we have to fix this now fleas though there's the good thing is is they're just so fucking easy to get rid of yeah you just give a, you give the dogs the flea have you treatment. ever gotten fleas <laughs> me personally yeah do, can people get fleas no Okay. We don't have enough, like, no, we, they, the fleas need the heat and they need the fur, like, and so we don't really, they, they don't do like the hair thing. I don't know. It's weird. I don't understand it. You're making me itchy. Sorry I had it. a uh, nanny family though that got like really overrun by fleas from their cats and they had carpets. So the fleas, are, but, but honestly, like they did all, they made me, <laughs> they made me help doing all this crazy shit. Like they were like steaming the carpets and doing all that. You don't really have to do that. You literally just have to give your animals like like flea treatment and then what happens is the fleas just jump on the animals and then they die and then yeah. it's over it's like over really fast they can't they can't live more than like 24 I, hours off of a host when i see a flea i can't not like and and when i say this this imagery in my mind it's so powerful i will never be able to like disassociate from this imagery is a bug's life the main flea in a bug's life He's like the, oh, the circus, circus leader. Yep, yep. And he's like, hey, yeah. <laughs> I just got that. That when I see a flea jumping on my dog, I'm like, I can't not. I'm picturing him, and it's so cemented in my brain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And he's like, welcome. And there's like the butterfly and the caterpillar. He's like, like abusing all of them. Yeah. Like, and Heinrich's like, hello. Like the cat, <laughs> the caterpillar. Oh my god, I love him. Bugs Life is really good. It's really funny Bugs too. Bugs Life. Bugs Life slaps. It's such a good well, as movie. an adult when you watch it and how funny it is. Like it's when a so leaf funny. when a leaf falls and they're like, ah! and they just like really like running. Did you ever go <laughs> on like, this? Is nothing compared to the twig of ninety three. That is so funny. <laughs> Those oh man, and Bugs Life was like the one of the very first <gasps> Pixar movie ever, if not the first mm. Pixar. Was Toy Story before Bug's Life? I'm not I sure. I don't know, but do you remember the skit at the beginning of the old man playing chess the by chess, himself? Yes, legend. Le- legend. Legend. Pixar legend. skit. So good. 
uh, the Up guy, the guy from Up. They later used him as the little old That's man. That's not in the up. same guy. I think it's the same guy. No, the the, the chess guy is all like has a really like thin they're, face. They're brothers, mm, cousins, mm, distant, second, <laughs> distant, twice removed. This is the last <laughs> thing we're going to talk about because I then have to go. But I'm going to make the boys talk about this tonight when they record their episode. Okay, I want to talk for a second about Snow White. Have you heard all the controversy? No, what's going on? I don't actually know exactly like what people are calling for. Like maybe they're actually, let me look it up real quick. Cause I, I, there's been all this, but okay, this is what happens. Like some like liberal person will like say something, you know how this happens. And then like a bunch of conservatives will jump on it and be like, this is why cancel culture is so stupid. Sure, like, you know sure. How that yeah, it's the same, so song, same song and dance every yeah. single day. <laughs> <laughs> cancel culture is out of control like okay stupid like, what are the person um say? okay so there's a controversy over um like the the the, the snow white ride at disneyland i guess mm-hmm. um because snow white is kissed without consent in this story a thought that i had never had before right yeah i'm actually kind of a little bit like i'm kind of a little bit shocked right now i know and at first like my kind of stuff with this i'm always like oh who the fuck cares but then like yeah one of the conservatives are so they're so mad right now but i'm like okay bro think about how one of our most classic children's stories can we at least i don't care where your politics lie admit that's kind of fucked up that one of our first children's story where is um a, like a prince stumbling upon this woman sleeping in the forest and then kissing her yeah and that's like our idea of like that's romantic wow, wow. not to be dramatic same but like sleeping i'm kind beauty. of yeah i was gonna say sleeping beauty is the same isn't that fucking same. weird that why two are they always out of sleeping these, isn't that weird that two out of these pretty pinnacle yeah. princess stories they're asleep and the prince comes and kisses them i'm not trying to think of in their sleep that's weird that's weird that is weird i mean i'm be i mean real, very real with you for two seconds you ever read brothers grim fairy tale well they're it's fucked all up. it's all very disturbing well and, and i mean then like the things that we are, are still like have going on the thing that i like about the brothers grim and actually this is like a this is something that my friend always talks about is the brothers grim though like they're not all happy endings and so they're sort of yeah. like supposed to be like like telling these tales to children of like the world isn't like a happy place well if you were raised by <laughs> potentially german or swiss parents in my the mother is swiss, uh my the, you would have been read read strupelpeter which i'm dwight, scared already dwight talks about in the office for a second and it was one of the moments in my life where during the office he holds up this book and he's like strupelpeter and i was like oh my god i was read that as a child and no one ever knows what i'm talking about and wow, it's this crazy dwight looking guy you. with like really long fingernails oh oh right? kind of like the babadook yes and and it's a kid's like a german or swiss kid's uh, uh story and the the tales are violent mm. and horrifying mm. and it's like if you do this if you disobey your parents strupelpeter will come and give you nightmares and haunt you for the rest of eternity like it's really scary yeah love that traumatizing (laughs) so yeah brothers grim is like fucked up but then the the thing about the disney um is that you know it's all pay it's all supposedly glossed over and airbrushed in a beautiful wonderful romantic fantasy right 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 right. and you're like "Mm, okay but two out of those like foundational stories i go a little so okay well what a trip now so now isn't is there it on the ride do we see the prince okay so let's see i just saw when i looked it up um i'm now trying to remember disneyland imagineer was that so i don't know what that is what's the fucking imagineer i think they're like hate these stupid titles what is this person i I literally live for them i love these exciting titles okay Okay, so disneyland reopened last week um oh the oh Okay, so now they've revamped the ride. I haven't been to Disneyland, but that's one of the... They, 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 they've been doing renovations while it's been closed. So now it's Snow White's Enchanted Wish. Oh, yeah, that one was getting a little... That one's that one was getting too old anyway. The Snow White one was weird. Some I of those old it. rides are really scary. You My, go to hell in Mr. Toast's Mr. Wild Toast? Rides. I love which, it. I which they also never change is, it. That kind of is actually kind of dope. Iconic. Um, <laughs> I mean, I hope they never change it. Horrifying for sure. It's so trippy. It's I can't such remember. A trip. I went on it with someone like a year or two ago or a couple years ago. And they and make it like, hot. Yeah. When you get to the hell part, it's hot. Yeah. That's a good one. But some, of those, a good one. Never some of those older rides are very frightening. Okay. 
Okay, so, so, they, so they changed it. Uh, it has new music, audiovisual technology, laser projections. <laughs> of course it does. <laughs> um, but this centers around the final moments of the film where Prince gives the true love's kiss to the poison Snow White. Uh, da, da, da. A writer from the SF Gate por- praised it for being gorgeous and beautifully executed, but takes issue with the Prince kissing in Snow White without her consent. Now Fox News, of course, is making it a huge fucking thing. <laughs> Cancel culture. Um, I mean, wait, what? Okay, so I just don't. Okay, see- Disneyland Imagineer Jim Shaw has stepped in to offer his takes in the following: allowing for the fact that cultural changes occur over decades, it must be acknowledged that in the context of the tale on which the film is based, the ride is accurate. People are, of course, allowed to dislike the story, but the Imagineering team does a spectacular job. Okay, yeah, I, I, I'm like, we don't have to not tell the story or like or ban it forever. But it's more like if you revamp it. Like at the very end, instead of the prince kissing Snow White, you could just have them holding hands and like waving. You know, I feel like they do that on <laughs> on some of the rides. They they obviously can't tell the whole hour and a half story, so you just see clips of it. Like, yeah, you wouldn't have. To, listen, they shut down Pirates of the Caribbean so that they could put Johnny Depp in a couple scenes. Like they oh, could and replace. they took out they took out the oh the, the women getting ch- the woman getting chased. Yeah, yeah. It's like just just with the Snow White thing. It's like maybe just like have the ending be a little different. Or regardless, even if you don't change it, like. Like my thing is, can't we at least have just a conversation, like a cultural conversation about it and then be like, yeah, maybe this is something we should talk to our kids about in context yeah. of con- of consent. And instead, everyone's losing their goddamn mind. It's like it's just to have a conversation. One of my friends was and just was saying like, this is so stupid. I'm like, well, it's not stupid. I think I don't think it's stu- I personally don't think it's stupid at all. I don't think any of these conversations are stupid, to be honest. I think obviously the way that we have they the way that we have them can, you know, can, can demands cause- we make as a result of them sure. can be stupid. It's like there's some demands that are more important that might should should require take maybe precedent. more take precedent and have more focus. But I think it's great to actually be having these conversations and be like, huh. Isn't you know what? Fucking weird? I never thought about the fact that, that happened with Snow White and Sleeping Beauty. And that is actually that's not great. So uh maybe that's <laughs> something that we should talk about. Also, I don't think we can pretend like these stories don't shape our ideas of consent as a very young child. Everything shapes our view of the world when we're when it's we're like young. every little girl, like or so many little girls grow up being like i want to be like snow white and sleeping beauty and it's like if that's what you it's weird shrek (laughs) what happened in shrek i don't remember i think in shrek shrek comes and like the uh the prince or the king or whatever gets he's like i can kiss one of these sleeping maidens and i choose fiona and like and yeah it's weird how that's a Fairy so I think tale Cri- trope. Yes, yeah, so I think I think Shrek then kisses Fiona, and like awakes her from her. Like I mean, it's a weird that it's a fairy tale trope. trope. Like yeah. that's like you know you're like oh yeah the prince kisses you and wake when you're asleep. Damsel in distress vibes. So it's like you know. I mean, like I'm fine. Uh, I get it. You know, and I know some people are like I'm not showing any princesses to my daughter. I mean, I don't know. I I, I, I get it, but I don't feel that passionately personally. Yeah, no, I don't but either. I'm like, but yeah, with the tr- that being a trope. Of like you, you are kissed when you are asleep. Mm-hmm. That's and, fucking creepy. Yeah, and that, that that's romantic. It's like no, that's wrong. Yeah. So <laughs> even if it's someone you've had a prior relationship with, even if you've met the prince before, we have a have problem been in love with him. Prince charming. Mm-hmm. With his actions. Mm-hmm. But it's just like I, and then I, I feel like. Oh, man, never mind. I'm, I'm gonna. My, I got it. I have a whole thing I want to talk. But about. my thing is though too is just like it's like uh, you know, especially when we're having a conversation about characters that aren't real. Let us have the conversation. This is what I was gonna say. Like people, it's get, like we're not ending someone's career. Even we're literally just having a conversation. I think people get extremely sentimental about this kind of thing. And look, yeah. some shit should be left in the past. Like, yeah. I was talking to my friend about this and she brought up, you know, like, I feel the same way about the baby. It's cold outside song. Like with the context of the movie, it's like cute. It's whatever. And I'm like, why are we so attached to this fucking stupid Disney movie and this stupid song? Why can't we just say sayonara and move on it's and be like, like, this has an iffy. This, this has an, an iffy uncomfortable, message. And you know what? Like, this isn't a cool message. Yeah. And also like. I don't know. Maybe this is the wrong take, but I'm like, if you're so damn attached to it, you can listen to it in the privacy of your own home. 
but maybe let's not put it on every Christmas channel or in the mall or like have the song recreated over and over again because there it's there's uncomfortable not okay context to the song. So there's a million other Christmas songs we can sing or holiday songs that we can <laughs> That's sing. That's what I'm saying. Why we have to be so attached to these random ones. Like we're clinging on to the, like, when Snow White was created, that was in the 1930s. Like, the shit was fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> out with the old, in with the new. Yeah, you bring Jack Sparrow into the pirates, let's take out that one little part in the ending. Like, I mean, whatever. Like, it's just... Or at least, can't we just admit, like, can't we just be like, that's just fucked up and be like, let's talk about that with our kids. Like, oh, see, he kissed her on the mouth and uh, she was asleep. That means she couldn't say that it was okay for him to kiss her. Yeah. That's not, that's not okay. That's not okay. Okay. Your kid's going to be like, yeah, you're right. And going to move lesson. on with their life. Yeah. Yeah. They're not sentimentally attached to Snow White. They don't give a no, fuck. You are. <laughs> yeah, you are, bitch. <laughs> you are. Anyway, that's all. Wow. I never thought about that. And I am now like very, Wow. I'm very invested in this now to see. Yeah, where I'm this making goes. Grayson bring it up when they when they record for love that. Uh, tomorrow's episode. Love that, love that, so, love that. And I I don't actually know what his take on it is. So who knows? Evan and Grayson may be deeply problematic. Great. Super looking forward to that. <laughs> <laughs> so looking forward to that take. <laughs> <laughs> well, Broads, uh, great chat. We I, I'm I kind of enjoying these like little fireside I know, I chats. I like these fireside. You know, we were coming here and we had like an intention for something, but lately, you know, obvious here's the thing. The fact of the matter is this. Uh, Bachelorette is back We're in a couple weeks. We're soaking in the time. Bachelorette is back in a couple weeks. And, you know, for right now, it's nice to just kind of like have like a, a friendly chat and just talk about random shit together. Yeah, I think it's fun. I hope you guys enjoy it. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoy it too. Also, uh, again, bros episode tomorrow with their pop culture takes. And then next week we have an amazing episode uh, with a uh, amazing woman named Ari. We're going to be talking about sobriety. And then... And then our Thursday episode. Oh, it's going to be killer. It's going to be a Broad, home it's gonna run. It's going to be so good. It's going to be so good. We might have a host. We might have a game. We might have the bros and us all in one place. It's going to be a good time. It's going to be a good time. I'll wait. So stay tuned. we got some fun stuff coming up. And uh, we'll chat soon. Chat soon. <laughs> <laughs>